let me tell you the secret about stunning landing pages. They're usually super simple. Not necessarily simple to design, but you usually only need to use four tricks to make them stand out visually. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how I use those four tricks to create four different kinds of sections inside of Figma. Now, let's go. The first thing you should think about when creating landing pages is your typography. We want to have good typography because without it, everything else is going to fall. Luckily, we have a great resource for this. And the resource is called fontshare.com. And here we can not just find fonts, but we can find font pairs. So if you go into the website and you click on the pairs tab, you can start scrolling and find a massive list of different font pairs that are free. So go in, do that, and download a couple of free fonts and then start playing around with this. The second step is that we need to start looking at this typography and make sure that it actually looks as crisp as we want. Because in some cases, it is not perfect out of the box. And that might be because line height and letter spacing needs to be tweaked. So the line height would be the spacing between rows in your text. The letter spacing would be the size, sorry, the space between letters in your text. I do have a video where I go into detail on how to tweak these up here to the right. But those two are the first kind of steps we want to do. We find a good font and then we tweak it. The next thing is to take this great looking font and start manipulating the content within it. So the actual text going from a long, boring copy to something that is more short and sweet and more effective in delivering the message. So having something like this, it's not taking a lot of space. People are going to read it and we can see that the difference here visually is just huge. Good typography, then we tweak it a bit, then we take the content and we make it more short and sweet. The third step is we take these rules or these tips and we start applying them to our groups of elements. So in this case, we're talking about deliberate placement, sizing and spacing. So in this case, this is what I would call a hero section maybe, where everything is center placed. We have a mega sized text and the spacing here is what I would call a pretty large spacing of 40 pixels. This is how easy we can create a hero section. If we would just add a background image now in this case, this would already look amazing if the asset is good looking, which we'll see in just a bit. So center aligned using mega sizing, using big spacing. That is one way to create a section. Another way would be to use left placement and left alignment. So we left align the text. We decrease the sizing to be from mega to large. So this is 120. This was 160 arbitrary numbers. You can use whatever numbers you want to use. And we decrease the spacing 40 to 32. It's very simple using the same spacing from the heading to the body, from the body to the call to action, decreasing the size of the call to action, and then just adding an asset to the right here. But this is just us changing the placement to the left with the text here, adding an asset to the right, decreasing the size and the spacing, and we have a completely new section. The third one, we do right placement with the text instead. So you can see here, we decrease the size again. We have the right placement. We decrease the spacing again, and we decrease the size of the call to action. And we add this asset to the left, which is some kind of carousel. Once again, super easy. We just shift the side of the text. We decrease the size and we have a new section. And the same thing here, we make a grid. And we have four items in the grid. We decrease the size of the headings. We decrease the spacing. And we just add small assets to it. 
and we have something that looks very promising. Now, where the magic happens is when we start adding beautiful assets and start color matching. And it is super easy. Look here. I've just added an image to the background here, a very good looking image. So that is essential. The asset has to be beautiful. I've added a radial uh, gradient here so that we can see the text. So it makes it a bit darker in the center. And that's it. I've also taken this call to action. I've taken colors from the image and made those colors the primary color of this landing page. Now, if you have a style guide or a design system already, you might already have your colors. So then you do it the other way around. You make sure that your assets map to your style guide or your design system's colors. So that's one way. This is for the hero. Then we have the second one here. We blur out the same image. So I've just taken the image, added a layer blur to get this Aurora effect here. Then I've added this same asset to the right and that's it. You can see it looks beautiful and we have to basically do nothing. Third one, blur out the image, decrease the size here. So if I would remove this, sorry, remove this, you can see it's still the image. I've blurred it out. I've decreased the opacity. I've added the same asset here, but changed the colors for some diversity. And we have a section that looks amazing. Same thing here blur out the image, change the shape of the image, shrink it a bit, use multiple colors here, and you have something that looks visually very appealing. But then you might ask yourself, is this actually going to work in every single case? And I would say, hell yes, it will. Sorry for cursing. But this is applicable to any kind of website. You can see here, I went back to fontshare.com. I chose a new font pair. I added a different asset. And you can see there's a result. It's looking amazing, even in this case. And another case, a different font pair, a different asset. And it just works. Simple techniques that makes your landing pages amazing. Now, if you want to make your landing pages into real websites, this is definitely for you. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.